Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial we're going to tie the Cinnamon Toast Betis, a fly created by Kevin Compton of Performance Flies. Stay tuned. Here's a finished look at the Cinnamon Toast Betis. This is a very slender fly, has just a great look to it. Not a lot of materials, but definitely think about the body material because it's a really unique one that almost looks like a miniature ostrich hurl. You're really gonna enjoy that. I'll also turn my fly tying light on for a moment. Sometimes this really drowns out the color, but I'll just do a quick 360 with that light on. Turn it back off. And now let's get a clean hook in the vise and start tying. Let's start tying this Cinnamon Toast Betis. In my Stonefo Transformer, I have a Honic Competition hook. This is their H260BL. That BL designation stands for barbless. You'll notice on the label that it's a size 16, which seems a little bit large for a blue wing olive, but I want to talk a little bit more about this Honic hook. Well, for the size 16, that means uh, one thing, especially for this hook, if we look at the hook shank and we measure it from there, to the point, it's a size 16 gap, which is a really significant gap to hook and, and maintain that hook set on fish. But for this specific one, for this H260, it's actually one excess, which basically means that it's one hook eye short. So it's more like a size 18 body with a size 16 gap. And that's a real great benefit for using a hook like this. So it is gonna be comparable to some of those smaller sizes when you think about a bluing olive. With this hook, I've, I've paired it with a, a tungsten copper bead. The size is two millimeter. And I'm gonna add some ADOT dark brown uni thread. All right, next we're gonna add some tailing fibers. I'm gonna use some Coke de Leon for this. The color I'm gonna shoot for is a medium or a dark pardo. But I first just wanna talk a little bit about the notion of not all fly tying materials being equal. So this is a, a Coke de Leon fiber, and, and what we really like about these is that they're very resilient. They, so it really means they're durable. They don't tear easily in the water and when you catch fish on the, on the fly. But the downside of purchasing some of these is that they're not all great materials that I want to use on my flies. For instance, this is a Coke de Leon fiber that came in a package that I purchased online. And in my mind, this one's not desirable because I really want to see that, that barring the whole way from the stem to the tips because more than likely we're only going to be using at most around four millimeters of the tip so there's not a lot of this feather that's going to be showing so seeing all this barring in the center really isn't going to do, do me any benefit because it's really light out to the tips so in this feather i'm probably only going to be using this section and there's a lot of wasted material here sure can i can i use this for some other pattern absolutely but in my mind here's a much more desirable coke de leon fiber if you look, it has barring the whole way out. Nearly all the feathers, all the fibers, the whole way down can be used and utilized. And I'm looking at it from both sides. So if you have an opportunity to, to hand select a feather like this, by all means do so. I purchased this one either in a fly shop or at a fly fishing or fly tying show. And I had the chance to kind of go through some packages and find one that had that barring the whole way out to the tips. If your only option is online, then by all means purchase them that way, but just be very discriminating whenever that package arrives. For my tail, I'm gonna to try to select around four or five fibers. Just keep them lined up by the tips. I'm gonna tie them so the tip is going past the bend of the hook. And I have a tendency to tie this with a longer tail. I only want that tail to be about one body length. So I just locked it in place with a few loose wraps. Now I'm just gonna grab the butt ends and pull them towards the eye to shorten the tail significantly. Just gonna take a look at it, see if it's about the length that I want. Still just a hair long. So just shorten it a little bit more and then finish locking it in place. Let's get rid of these butt fibers. Next, I'm, I'm gonna add a really fine copper wire. This is gonna serve as our ribbing and it's also just gonna add a little bit of a shine to this fly. So after I have it locked in, I'm just gonna wrap back, make sure those tail fibers looking good. 
I'll get this locked in my material clip and now it's time to add the all-star material of this pattern. It's now time to add the body and the material that I'm talking about is called Condor Substitute. When I first heard the name Condor Substitute, I really just assumed that this was something for salmon flies, but I quickly realized that I was wrong. You're gonna notice when I tie this material in, it almost looks like a miniature ostrich curl. It's a really unique material. I love to use this at fly tying demos because it's something that many tires haven't seen. The color that I'm going to be using is called brown olive. Uh, Kevin Compton, who uh, created this fly, he sells this material out of his shop, performanceflies.com. It's a really unique material. There's lots of colors. Uh, I have it in pretty much all of them. The one comment that I'll make is, uh, I'll actually make a couple comments regarding this. Just like Coque de Leon, not all of these fibers are created equally. So you can see there's some here that just kind of seem to be kind of butchered together in a sense, whereas maybe on this side we have some straighter ones. So I'm just gonna select a single fiber from this, trim it, and then tie it in by the tip. Now, whenever I tie this at demos, I typically will tie in two because it's not a very resilient material. Similar to Peacock Curl, I'm gonna actually go down about almost an inch and just tear off a little bit of the tip. I basically want to start tying it in where there's a taper that begins and where you can see some of that fuzziness. That's kind of my tie-in point for this. Now, Kevin only ties these in one at a time, uh, which really shows uh, how much better of a tire he is than me because whenever I tie them in by, by just one, geez, I really tend to break these off. So again, whenever I'm doing demos, I tend to tie in a couple at a time because then it protects me a bit. So I'm just gonna lock this in place. You really don't need much to do that. And after I have it locked in, I'm gonna wrap up to the bead. And now I'm gonna just kind of build in a small taper. So I'm just gonna wrap back, portion of the way, back up, back again, not as far, and back up. Let's take a quick peek at this. Go back one more time. Just build it up just a little bit more. I just want a slight carrot taper with this pattern. We want to keep it. We want to keep it really slender because that is really representative of the betas. All right. Next, if you prefer to use some type of hackle plier, you can. Though I, I kind of prefer just to use my fingers when wrapping this. I feel like I have a better chance of controlling it with that and maintaining the correct pressure. I'm just going to wrap forward. I'm going to make sure they're touching wraps. see a little bit of a gap in there, so I'm just going to back it off one. And then just tie it off by my bead. All right, now hopefully the camera is really showing the bugginess of that body. It just is a really unique material. Uh, that Condor substitute just works really well, which is why I call it the, the all-star material of this fly. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the discussion component of this video. Next, I'm gonna counter rib with my fine wire. That counter rib is also going to help protect our body. Just helicopter this off with a few. And then finally, we're gonna add in our thorax slash head, and it's gonna be this Simon Peacock dubbing, fine, and, and the color is Peacock Bronze. It's gonna give just a really nice dark brown look to that head. You don't need a lot of this stuff. It's got a nice amount of shine to it, but you really just want just a really fine amount so you can make around two turns, and that's it, just to create that really dark head at the, at the front of this fly. So you'll notice right now I probably have too much in, but I will continually, before I start wrapping, just make sure I have a very tight dubbing noodle and just keep it really close to the bead. That's all I want, just a very slight head. And I'm gonna immediately go to my whip finish. And now you'll see why we, we paired this with that dark brown thread, just blends in perfectly 
with the head. It just is completely hidden. And that's it for this cinnamon toast betas. Now, if you'd like to pick it out with a dubbing brush, you can, but typically, whenever I, I take a look at some of Kevin's finished flies, this is what they look like. We have that really nice Coke de Leon tail, that medium to dark pardos, just going straight out. We have that really cool looking condor substitute body, that fine ribbing, and a really tight head at the front. So there's a finished look at the Cinnamon Toast Betas. Now let's talk a little bit more about this pattern. Now that we've finished tying the Cinnamon Toast Betas, let's take a look at it from both of those fly tying and fly fishing perspectives. For starters, with the tying perspective, when I typically will jump to the discussion part of a video, I find myself saying, how can you vary this fly? Let's talk about some variations. Though I'm not sure how many exist for this one. That main body material, the Condor Substitute, is just one of those ones that you have to have for this fly. I'll talk about using it in other applications because I've used it for both the dry flies and for nymphs. There are other colors that you can purchase it in and I definitely will, will tell all of you, play with it, uh, let me know what you think about it because it's just a great material. But when I think about this Cinnamon Toast Betas, there's really only a couple changes you can make. You can vary that dubbing material at the front and you can also kind of play around with the tailing fibers. You can go pheasant tail, you can change the color of the Coke de Leon. If you jump to Kevin's website, performanceflies.com, he has a picture of the Cinnamon Toast Betas and he has the description for all the materials. And he tends to tie it with more of an olive Coke de Leon material. I'm going with more of a medium to a dark pardo color. Um, is one better than the other? I'm not sure. If you, you talk to Kevin, he might say, yeah, by all means, go with olive. Though in my mind, if those fish are being that selective, we probably don't have a shot at catching them whatsoever. Now, if we jump to that fly fishing component, that, that next avenue, this is just one of those flies that catches fish. It's a great one, and there's lots of different ways to fish it. You can fish it by itself. You can fish it through riffles, through some pools, those blooming olive type spots. You can also fish this one as a dry dropper. So basically, you can take a dry fly, and off the bend of the hook, you can tie a piece of tippet material, and then you can track that dry fly, and you'll have this Cinnamon Toast Betas in the water, a little bit lower in the water column, going along. I tend to fish this one, though, behind another nymph or a streamer, where I'll tie in that streamer first, then off the bend of the hook, I'll add around 18 inches of tippet material, typically 5X, and then I'll tie that Betas behind it. And I, I tend to pick up quite a few fish on both the streamer and this Cinnamon Toast Betas, though this one tends to outfish many of those other patterns, which is why I'm really happy to share, share it with all of you out there. So it's a great pattern, have some fun with it, and like I tend to say, if you think that there are some ways to vary it, I'd love to hear from you to kind of think about some of the creativity that you can interject into this pattern. Well, for starters, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you got a little bit more out of it with the, the Cinnamon Toast Betas. And if you can, check out Kevin's website, which is performanceflies.com. I know he sells the Condor Substitute there. Uh, it's a great material. Um, if you've been to any of my fly tying demos, you've probably seen me use it because I use it so often. It's just a really neat thing to play around with. If you'd like to watch more of my fly tying tutorials, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I'm also on that social media realm. Uh, I have a Facebook and an Instagram page. They're both under the Trout and Feather heading. On Facebook, I tend to post a lot of articles, links to some of my older videos, whereas on Instagram, I send more fish pics. I share a little behind the scenes with what's going on with these videos, just more of that fun stuff. If you have any questions, please, uh, you can leave them down below in the comments section, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Once again, thank you everyone for watching this fly tying video.